Welcome to the Rise Podcast, where inclusivity is our priority. Hello, everybody. My name is Sean English, and welcome back to the Rise Podcast. Today, my guest is Brian Bell. Brian, can you say hi? Hey, guys. Well, thank you for coming out, Brian. I really appreciate it. And uh, we're just going to do a little little interview real quickly. And uh, I'm going to give a, a brief introduction uh, to who Brian is, and then we'll... Uh, We'll, we'll let Brian take the show. So Brian is a 32-year-old Bologna amputee that plays professional on the professional wheelchair basketball team, the USA or basketball team. He is from Birmingham, Alabama, and recently graduated DeVry University in 2019. He is a gold medalist, that is right, a gold medalist in Rio 2016, and a two-time silver medalist at World Championships in 2014 and 2018. Brian is a husband and a father of five, who currently resides in Germany and plays prof professional wheelchair basketball overseas. When Brian was 10 years old, he was in a train accident that resulted in his amputation. So that's the, the brief summary, but we'll get into the, the nitty gritty right over here. Uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit about Brian's story uh, when he was younger, that transition into uh, being an able-bodied kid to being a disabled kid. And then we will talk a little bit more about wheelchair basketball and everything that makes uh, Brian the perfect person and the, the great basketball player that he is today. So Brian, if you could tell me a little bit about that transition when you were younger. Um, I, I personally speaking, I, I can uh, comment it. It's been difficult, but I, for me, mm -hmm. but we love, I, at least here on the podcast and here with our group rise, uh, we love hearing those stories and uh, the triumphant return that uh, you, you made quote unquote, because you, you turned, an incident that could have been almost life ending into mm -hmm. this, this prosperous life for you. So if you could talk to talk to me a little bit about uh, that, about that age of 10. Yeah. Uh, so like you said, I got injured when I was around 10. Uh, it was kind of a big shock, shock going up, um, you know, being an everybody kid, doing all those normal things that, with your friends. Um, and then all of a sudden getting injured, losing your leg. Um, but when I was in the hospital, uh, I felt down briefly, uh, but I had a lot of family and friends that came to visit and they kind of cheered me up and, and kind of put me in the, the right mindset to kind of get back into it. And on top of that, the doctors also said that it's possible to kind of do normal things with the prosthetic as well. So um, that was also high hopes that I was looking forward to. And then I got into the rehabilitation to get prepared to get a prosthetic uh, really quickly and I progressed. Um, fairly well, um, and I was able to get a prosthetic um, a lot sooner than, than later. Um, um, then also, I went to um, Shriners Hospital, uh, which kind of kind of helped out because I'm kind of from a low-income family when I was growing up. So they kind of took care of organizing trips to um, like a more um, specialized place in Greenville, South Carolina. So we made multiple trips from Birmingham to there through Shriners um, to kind of get um, like first rate doctors to kind of help with making a prosthetic that was, that was best for me um, to get me back to kind of more normalized life. And like you said, I was able to get back into the swing of things pretty quickly. Um, got back into prosthetic maybe like a year and a half later. I was able to go back to school uh, and pretty much uh, live a normal life. Um, I even attempted to play middle school football on a prosthetic uh, uh, because I was just living in the South and football being such a big sport. I've always wanted to play it. So I even played that for a year. Of course, it didn't work out because, you know, it's a lot of running up and down the field on a prosthetic. Uh, but at least I have it in my, you know, bucket list. And I've, I've tried it once. So, uh, but yeah, then I was able to find a wheelchair basketball a couple years later and I kind of fell in love with it. That's awesome. I actually, um, that's funny you say Shriners. I've actually worked with Shriners as well. They do a lot of oh, really okay. work with people too. So uh, yeah. that's cool that you played football. I love that. That's the first thing that I wanted to do was, was get back out. I was a runner before. First thing I wanted to do was get back out on okay. the track or just proving people yeah. wrong that I can still play with this, uh, this leg. So. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Well, can you talk to me a little bit about finding wheelchair basketball and, and, because because that's that's really difficult when when it comes to uh, an amputation or any traumatic mm -hmm. injury like that is finding that that thing that you love and that you just really want to yeah. take it and run with it. 
So talk to me a little about wheelchair basketball. Did you find it? Did you know anything about the Paralympics when this happened? I know you're around mm -hmm. 10, but uh, I talked to a lot of people and they don't really know too much about the Paralympics until they do a little bit of research. So yeah, talk to me about finding wheelchair basketball and just kind of going with that. Uh, yeah, uh, finding wheelchair basketball is really by chance. My mom at the time was kind of working two jobs and one of her jobs was kind of a kind of tech nurse at a hospital um, kind of near the Lake Shore Foundation, which is kind of a Paralympic training site uh, for certain certain sports. So her one of her coworkers at the time mentioned that they do a lot of adaptive sports there. Um, there's a bunch of sports that you know people with disabilities can do um, and still be active. So I was able to go one Saturday morning because they do like kind of sports. I guess day um, or on Saturday to kind of introduce people to different adaptive sports um, in the community. So I was able to try a bunch of different types of sports, like even like sports I knew I wouldn't be able to do, like wheelchair rugby uh, type of thing. So I, I did tennis, I tried basketball. Um, at the time, um, I even tried a little bit of track and football, um, but they didn't really have an established wheelchair football team, but we, we did it nonetheless. Uh, but yeah, I just fell in love with the, the basketball aspect because basketball and football were kind of my favorite two sports growing up. So at the time, the coach for the middle school and high school team was there at the event, kind of helping facilitate and run different um, activities. Oh, he saw me kind of playing around, shooting by myself, uh, and he got his thoughts attention to me and came up to me and asked me if I wanted to play. And of course, I jumped on the opportunity because I love playing sports growing up. And yeah, I just fell in love with it. Um, a great coach, uh, his name was Miles Thompson. Um, he's a very accomplished coach. He coached uh, uh, women's um, GB national team a couple of years. Um, he coached at University of Alabama for a couple of years. So he was a very accomplished coach and I was very lucky to have him at a young age, so. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, I know the, the finding the wheelchair basketball was is a lot of the hardest part for, for a lot of people. So I'm happy that a smooth transition for you too. And um, I just want to talk a little bit about, we talked about your early career with wheelchair basketball. Let's, let's talk about your professional career here. When did you realize that you could, you could do this, that you could do this at a high level and that you could be one of the best in the world? Um, it, it kind of started with that coach I mentioned, Mal Thompson. Um, he just, kind of saw that I had what it took and he kind of motivated me and pushed me to, to steadily get better um, with everything steady, like steady. Um, yeah, it was just right off, the, right off the back, he put me through basically just like college level drills when I was like 13, 12, um, you know, and I took the challenge. I, I wanted to get better. So um, I did all the stuff he wanted. We did cross training even in the summertime. Um, that, you know, most high school, you know, kids or middle school kids are not doing, like swimming, cross training, um, all types of things, just kind of um, get the edge to kind of make that, that next step after I'm done playing middle school, high school basketball, and uh, eventually go on to college and play for University of Illinois uh, for a couple of years there uh, with basketball. Um, and then, um, of course, with the USA team, and then later professionally here in uh, Europe. That's awesome. And you have an incredible resume when it comes to, to accolades that you've, you've accomplished over the years. Uh, two world championships, silver medals at two world championships, 2014, 2018. Mm -hmm. You got the gold in Rio in 2016. You're a three-time um, Italian league champion as well? Yeah, 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 it's correct. Yep. Okay, so that, that is just an incredible resume and you're, you're really hitting all the bases. But the one base I want to touch on today is, uh, is Rio. 2016 mm -hmm. what was what was that like that just that gold medal feeling maybe hearing your name seeing your teammates I mean you guys work together so hard as a team just to see that mm -hmm. that shiny gold can you tell me like how that how that felt yeah um it, it was a definitely long process um beginning of the quad uh, the four-year span Lee up Rio um because we knew we were, we were a gifted team um but we just had to like come together as a group and prove it um, and kind of a big eye-opening was the World Championship that we got silver um, and we lost to our sharing team in the final. Um, it was kind of a heartbreaking moment, but it was kind of a, a great moment for us as well to kind of rebuild, refocus, and come back hungry 
um, for the Paralympics um, because we weren't the favorite going in. Like we played well, um, and most people always think that USA are you know the top favorites, but we want the number one favorite to win it all. Um, but the summer leading up, um, we played extremely well. Uh, we pretty much beat every team that were our rivals for the final um, that summer leading up to it. Um, and we were going in pretty strong, and, and still we had to prove it because we felt the same way leading up into Worlds. Um, and we ended up still losing. Um, but the biggest, I would say, driver was the fact that we haven't won a gold medal in 28 years before that moment. Um, it just was uh, us having such a great resume of having a lot of great athletes come out of the USA program and not to have, you know, the hardware to back it up. We just kind of put that on our shoulders. Uh, we talked to some of the guys from the, the team back 28 years ago who won a gold medal and what their experience were. I mean, and like some of the guys that uh, we knew uh, from all the previous teams leading up to that, that came a little short. Um, and that was all motivating factors where we just wanted to prove to the world that USA needed to be back on top of them. And we finally was able to prove that and show it. Wow. That, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy that you guys kind of had that chip on that shoulder. I know it probably sucks coming up and with that silver medal instead of getting that gold in, in 2014, yeah. but that was just a, a driving force with the history as well. That was a driving force. And I mean, in the whole disabled community, there's that, there's that flip, there's that switch where we have that motivation and it seemed like everybody was motivated. And of course, all teams are motivated, but you guys had an, a, a special yeah. reason to go. Um, and that just shows the hard work and dedication and good coaching and, and just good playing and good execution. So a lot can go into those games and uh, just a few mess ups and, and you go home. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy that you guys came back with that gold. You guys deserved it. And um, I'm, I'm happy that uh, you got a good team this year as well. Like that, mm -hmm. that Tokyo is going to gonna look like a good competition where uh, there's going to be a lot of viewers that can watch because Yep. Uh, I'm just we're, we're just trying to spread the word so we get people to tune in and because I know mm -hmm. once people tune in they'll fall in love with it so exactly that's that's the that's the big goal right there so th that's incredible but a gold in Rio um, just shows the hard work and dedication that the 19 years of wheelchair basketball uh, really went into it so um, mm. I just want to commend you for that um, let's talk a little bit more about your personal life um, like I okay. said at the beginning uh, you're a husband uh, you're a father of five and in a lot of interviews, you're very outspoken about being an African-American male as well as an amputee. And I even saw a quote where people come up to you all the time and ask if you've served in the country or mm -hmm. in our armed services. And mm -hmm. when you say, oh no, I, I actually didn't serve in this country, like the value kind of goes down. I get that a lot as well. Like I, people ask yeah. if I've served and they say no, and then, or I say no, and then they kind of sound like disappointed as if like there should be yeah, exactly. on my life. Yeah. So uh, if you want to talk a little bit about that, um, this is completely your platform and we're, we're here mm -hmm. to spread a message and we're here to spread awareness. And if there's anything we can change in the community is this, uh, this growing group on a, uh, on a mm -hmm. campus in the Midwest, that's our plan. Yeah. So uh, if you could just talk, talk a little bit more about that, that'd be great. Yeah, definitely. Um, like you stated, um, married, um, have five kids. So my life is always kind of chaotic and busy. Uh, it was never really a kind of a down moment, um, you know, kind of break up fights you know, between the kids. Um, but yeah, it's I've been overseas for eight years now, or at least eight years now. So um, it's good for the kids, I would say, because they were able to see different cultures. Um, the first four years I was in Italy. Um, now this is my fourth year in uh, Germany. Um, so it's able to kind of see different types of um, cultures, personalities from all over the world meet people that they wouldn't necessarily meet um, just being in the U.S. Um, so it's just a great foundation, I think, for them. Um, once we return back to the U.S., we got to have that kind of foundation and culture um, lean into it. Because as kids, um, the biggest thing is trying to put them in the right mindset, the right frame, um, of being able to be open with the world, be able to be receptive to people's differences um, with culture and so forth. Um, so living over here and being able to kind of have them uh, see that and uh, live it is, is amazing. And also picking up the language as well helps, I feel like, for them in the future as well. Um, but yeah, uh, but being uh, disabled and African-American, um, it's definitely 
to be challenging times. I know of the kind of the things that's happened in the past um, couple of years in the U.S. with kind of brutality and stuff like that. It's it's just more um, being open and being receptive to people's feedback and want and being willing to listen. Um, that's kind of the biggest thing I would say. Most people are just not willing to listen, um, and they're just kind of stuck on their own personal views or personal opinions without being receptive to others. And that's kind of what kind of stems to kind of the uh, prejudice and kind of racism to other people of different nationalities, race or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I just try to keep teach my kids to be open. Um, if they have questions about certain things, I try to be open with them and, and teach them uh, from a young age so they don't, you know, we don't want to just keep having this trend of um, consistent kind of racism, racism like treatment um, over and over and over. Just be open with kids. I know it would be difficult and hard. It's definitely a difficult conversation sometimes to have with kids, but kids are curious. Um, instead of having them, you know, you know, formulate uh, things on the wrong like way, um, educate them early so they can know, um, and then that way they don't have to be swayed by things from the community, society in a negative way. Uh, but yeah, so disabled wise, uh, like what you mentioned, like people come up to you um, asking if you've been on service. And basically, yeah, like I said, I'm always saying that no, I would have loved to serve. That was kind of one of my first like um, things I wanted to do before I got into it was to serve because I knew um, serving your country is kind of a high honor. Um, and I know back then I wanted to go to university. I wanted to go get education. And being in the armed services to serve your country also helps with um, potentially them helping pay for education. And that will help uh, lessen the burden for my mom being a single parent um, home. So that was kind of my mindset as well. But yeah, looking back at it, um, I tell people I would love to serve, but it just didn't work out that way. But I served the country in different ways by going to the Paralympics and representing my country at the global stage in, in that regard. Um, but yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's perfectly said. And it sounds like you're, you're as, it sounds like you're, you're a better father than you are a wheelchair basketball player and you are a damn good wheelchair basketball player. <laughs> uh, be at least. I appreciate that, uh, that insight there. And uh, that's, you're going through a lot playing, playing professional wheelchair basketball, living overseas and, and being a father of five and a husband as well. So it, yeah. it seems like you're checking all the boxes in, in, a, in a very um, comfortable and precise way. So uh, I, I appreciate that insight and I appreciate you sharing that too. Thank you. So uh, let's talk a little bit more, more about the person instead of the, the amputee here. So let's get to know like I feel like you do a bunch of interviews and they're like, oh, what happened to your leg? And, and yeah, we talked a little bit about that, but no one really talks to get to know you. So I, I, I just have a few like just random kind of like spitfire questions, just to, like get to know yeah, you. Go for it. Um, athlete that, that has like inspired you on a professional level or non-professional level, uh, who might that be? Um, I would say growing up, uh, being at, being in like the Lake Shore uh, Foundation growing up when I was first started off, they had a bunch of USA uh, like tournaments there, games there, and being able to kind of see like national team play um, at a young age. Um, I know kind of a, a good rival uh, for the USA team was Pat Anderson, um, which is kind of considered, most people think like the Michael Jordan of which at basketball. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was able to you know see him in person when I was at a younger age, go to like training not training camps but like sports camps for kids, um, and he'll be a counselor, um, and he doing some of the tricks and moves and me trying to imitate him or even ask him just questions and and just kind of seeing what he can do was amazing because he's a big guy but he was also quick, um, in that time you know big guys were mainly just big, um, but they weren't quick. So I kind of want to kind of imitate my game after that. I wanted to be, because I'm not a big guy per se in the chair, um, but for my class, I have to be a big guy. So I wanted to be quick. I wanted to be able to do pretty much everything, shoot, score, handle the ball, run the play. So I kind of try to tailor my game to what he does. He pretty much does it all. Um, he can be a big guy. He can you know, run the floor. He can be a shooter. Um, so that, that was kind of the guy I kind of looked up to when I was, I was early on growing up. 
That's awesome. Yeah, we all have that uh, that athlete that inspires us up there. And um, sounds like a lot, like just being able to play all, basically all five positions, be big, be small, be quick, be nimble. You can shoot, you yeah. can throw the ball. That, that sounds like just everything that, um, cur at least current basketball that um, at any professional level is all about now is, uh, yeah. is there's, there's no like, um, like big, big guys anymore. And that's really not working. Everyone's got to be able to do everything. So yeah, uh, that's exactly. awesome that you're modeling the game after him because that sounds like that's the right way to go. And it's definitely yeah. worked out for you because yeah. you, you got a gold medal. So yeah. um, let's do you, do you have any like hobbies, like uh, like TV shows? Do you, do you watch any um, sports on a professional level? Um, I know it's, I know it's March right now. There's a, there's a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of games to watch. Uh, at, I'm a yeah. fan. So I'm a little mm -hmm. tough that my team, my team was knocked out. Um, but yeah. I enjoy sitting down and I enjoy watching the games or, or a TV show or um, just going out and, and just trying to play sports. So do you have any hobbies that maybe the world might not know about? Um, uh, watching sports wise, I always watch, of course, the NBA. Um, I don't watch all like a bunch of games. I usually kind of focus on the playoffs when it starts. Yeah. Um, watching those because the time difference is kind of hard to kind of yeah. Try to watch all the games, and I don't have that much time today to kind of go back and watch all the games. But I do watch highlights. You know, I see all the different highlights and uh, recaps on on social media, so I get it that way. But once the playoffs start, I usually um, try to watch all the games in rows um, because those are the you know the most the most heated games, most intense games. Um, I watch the NFL uh, as well. Um, you know, with love of football. Um, I don't have a favorite team for either of those, uh, being from Alabama, because we don't really have a professional team. Uh, pretty much our professional team is a college football team, and that's Alabama. So, yeah, nice. uh, <laughs> but yeah, but I have favorite players, so like LeBron of NBA, stuff like that, Steph Curry, those type of guys. Um, for hobbies, I would say. Um, when I was growing up, I used to draw a lot in the more artistic side. Um, I don't, I do it less now because I have more things pulling me different directions. Um, but every, every now and then I do kind of pick up a pencil or whatever and, and kind of do the world draw. Um, I actually did like a, a drawing of uh, a bar that's one of our sponsors here because we had an event uh, with them last week. So I made like the sponsor that I know pretty well, like the owner um, uh, painting or drawing of this bar um, and I gave it to him. So I do have a little spark of uh, artistic. A little, uh, sounds like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, inspiration here and there, but yeah. But that was about, that's pre pretty much it for hobbies wise. A lot of video game, a little bit. But again, it was finding the time to do it. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much uh, the, just of my hobbies, I would say. Yeah. Wow, um, you're accomplished in every <laughs> in, in, in yeah. every you go. It sounds like, um, yeah. I I try I try and watch NBA and, and sports as much. I, I love sports. I want to go into sports yeah. commentating. Hopefully after I graduate, oh um, and kind of the same thing for me. LeBron, just one of my favorite players. He recently just got hurt. Like hopefully he's yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Set out yeah. indefinitely, but. I don't know. We'll see. But it, it's really cool just tuning into those games, especially the NBA. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed yeah. watching the bubble too. That was that was a really interesting and unique yes. Um, yes. Well. perspective on the sport. And uh, mm -hmm. it's all competitive this year. And especially when if LeBron's out, he's the best player in the world by far. So yeah. uh, we'll, yeah. see, we'll see who takes it. But yeah, I, I enjoy watching sports. I enjoy playing sports as much as I can. Um, yeah. I think your Alabama football professional football team, right? <laughs> Tiger or my Detroit Lions professional football team. So I know about uh, that. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's um, it's it's tough being a Detroit fan nowadays. Uh, it seems like all yeah. four of our major sports have, uh, have have struggled a little bit. I won't be too outspoken, but a little bit. But you know, it could be a rebuilding period. But yeah, it's been a rebuilding period for a little bit. But yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's cool that, that you, you can draw like that, especially like having your kids around, they're probably doing the, doing the 
paintings and you're like oh that looks great but yeah like there, <laughs> you should just get up yeah. there you, uh, hand it over let me let me take it from here yeah so that that's really cool that uh you did that that drawing painting thing for the um for that sponsor that's mm. that you're extremely talented and um i i i love how you're you're using your talents in in all unique ways and um yeah it, it could have easily been someone else that that did that mm. Um, but I, mm. but I love that that you did that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I like that. That's cool. Um, <laughs> Appreciate. Is there anything else that that you would like to talk about? Uh, I have a a few more uh, little questions here, but I wanted to take a little break to see if you wanted to talk about anything. Uh, did I miss anything so far? Do you want to comment on something? No, no. I think we covered mostly. mostly okay. Everything. Well, um, I you said you're not. A big, big guy. I think you're six one, six foot. Yeah, six one. Yeah. One? Okay. Um, I'm I'm like six two, six three area. So I I feel like my legs don't really fit in the wheelchair basketball chair as well. Mm. Um, just uh, in my four months of experience, I would like yeah, yeah. knees and all that. Um, I was just wondering if you think. Um, do you think that you're at some sort of advantage or disadvantage being a below knee amputee? Um, or, or being tall or being shorter? Uh, do you think there is some way, I, of course, I'm, I'm a little bit more new to basketball or wheelchair basketball, mm. and uh, most of our viewers are as well. So um, mm. I kind of just wanted to hear a little bit about like, do you think that just having one leg is an advantage or a disadvantage? Or um, what do you think about that? Um, it's it's kind of hard to say. Um, I would say for having like one amputation, I would say, uh, the higher amputation for playing wise is better only because you have you get like a half a point less. So instead of being a four or five, you're four all. Yeah. Um, but you you have most of the functions of a normal four or five, but you get an extra point um, to play with. Uh, so you can have a you know a better team or better squad on the floor. Um, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily better. Um, in regards of like playing and talent, it just kind of depends on the person. Um, height is a big key for being um, a four, four, five. It's not the only key. Um, like I said, I'm not very big. Um, so you kind of have to find things that um, that you can kind of improve on to kind of help compensate, overcompensate for like the lack of height. Um, but yeah, like I wish sometimes that I was huge. I know I have a guy on my team here that um, I don't know, I think he's like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, something like that. So he's a pretty big guy. And it's just like, I tell him all the time, I just, I wish I was that big as you are. But it's just, I just feel like you just, you just hold the ball up there forever and you know, take it as much time as you want to, to shoot. Um, but for me, it's a little bit more um, patience and finding my time to shoot if I'm like surrounded by big guys or a lot of hands type of thing. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not really a good one way, one answer to that, to that question. Um, but yeah, for the only thing I would say is it's a high reputation for the half point more um, in your favor. Yeah, I was just, I was just curious. And um, I know a lot of our viewers don't know too, too much about wheelchair basketball. So I figured I'd just mm -hmm. ask that. And yeah. I, I, anytime I look at someone, so I play at the, uh, the rec that we have here. And uh, one of my buddies is 6'10". But he does. He mm. doesn't deserve to be six ten. I tell him every day. <laughs> and I wish I was. I wish I was your height. If I was your height, it would be. It would be. Yeah. I would be so much more fun playing playing ball. Yeah. And um, yeah. but I like messing around with him because he's so tall. But he's he's almost too tall to not be like that good. Everyone's yeah. like oh, picking him on my team first, but he's he's not that good. So. <laughs> um yeah so I I think we've covered a lot covered a lot of bases. Uh, I I did want to ask about um being tall, uh, just because I, or being tall and um, maybe just with the, with the one leg, um, because that's just something that I personally experienced, but I, I only have four months playing, so, and I'd love to get back into it. It's just difficult with school and finding a team uh, in my local area, but um, yeah, for sure. I love, yeah. love the sport, so um, yeah. hopefully one day for me. Um, yeah, definitely. Let's say, let's say wheelchair basketball, playing um isn't a long-term plan for you do you plan on coaching or do you plan on staying within the sport or the community um after maybe you retire 
Yes, it's always been the plan. Um, definitely after I just start, uh, started basketball when I was at a young age, I felt like I wanted to kind of give back. So I've always had some um, idea in my mind to, to do some type of coaching um, to kind of get back, uh, even at like the junior high school level. Um, I wanted to at least do something to give back. I even thought about even doing like a, a coach for like a collegiate team at one point. Uh, but yeah, it's just some type of coaching at some level because I feel like the biggest thing is um, that we're missing in our sport in certain areas is quality coaches um, to kind of teach the kids growing up and, and a new new generation. And it's good to have coaches that have played the game and have a lot of experience to kind of um, show the kids what you accomplished um, and and see what they've done and and kind of show what you've done to, to show them uh, what they can kind of live up to or kind of like um, have a goal towards um, type of thing. So, yeah, it's always been kind of a plan. It still is a plan. Um, I know I'm, I'm still leaning – right now I'm still uh, leaning towards like doing more of a kind of, you know, real job on top of that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I'm kind of doing my MBA right now um, so I can kind of go get my foot in the door in like the business uh, side of it. Uh, but yeah, coaching has definitely been kind of one of the things I want to do, uh, no matter what. Um, it's just whatever level, either collegiate or just kind of as a hobby at a smaller level, like junior or high school. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm um, I'm really happy that uh, you want to give back to coaching because I know there's a shortage of coaches out there. Um, my yeah. team was run by the guy that had the most years uh, playing ball, so we didn't have a coach. Okay. But it was uh, it was yeah. only five of us. It was it was a pretty small team, but um, yeah. yeah, I I I think that's I think that's crucial is uh, kind of creating the this this next generation in anything that we do. If there's problems mm -hmm. in our generation, if there's problems in our, in the world today, then I hope those mm -hmm. problems that we can get them resolved. So uh, I mean, we're all working to a better tomorrow, and yeah. we never settle as as a community and, and as humans. Uh, we always got to be working to to get better, uh, so the life that our our kids could be better than the lives that we live. So, um, yeah, sure. and, and you, you have five kids. You're you're pursuing an MBA. Uh, you're graduating in the fall, correct? Yep. And you're and you're playing wheelchair basketball. So maybe adding coaching to to that, uh, <laughs> that crazy list yeah. would be kind of crazy right now. But um, yeah, right now, yeah. Yeah, you got to be just going insane with the uh, with with being a father right now and, and and pursuing an MBA. I couldn't even imagine pursuing an MBA right now. As <laughs> so that no, may be on the table. I know you could do it. Yeah, that's a lot. So um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, kind of recap real quickly, um, see if we missed anything. I don't think we did. We talked about okay. um, you kind of growing up and yep. uh, that transition. We talked about your transition to finding wheelchair basketball and and then you taking wheelchair basketball under your wing and, and really just going with it, being one of the better athletes in the world on, on the best team in the world in 2016. And um, we're all, as a community here, we're all looking forward to Tokyo. We're all looking forward to, uh, to seeing the games, uh, to seeing these athletes and to supporting everyone. Of course, um, I, I will be supporting Team USA, but I'm, uh, I'm supporting the Paralympics. And um, I, I really hope that uh, that this this podcast and this group that I am with on campus, and anyone out there in the world that's trying um, can can get these um, get these um, get these people to watch watch this these games because yep, you just got to watch and you'll fall in love and yeah, and that's what exactly. I tell everyone you just got to watch and you'll fall in love and and there's so much to learn there's so much experience that's out there uh different sports that people have never seen so I, i'm really looking forward to to tokyo and i and i know you are as well and um good luck with with um with com coming up in june and good luck with uh, any tournaments that you have coming up as well and uh i'm really looking forward to 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 seeing team usa and to to seeing the paralympics yep thank you yes of course is there anything else you want to say before we uh we head out no, it's uh, thank you for having me on the on the podcast. Appreciate it. Of course. Well, everyone, this has been uh, the Rise Podcast, and um, everyone have a good day. <laughs>